fourth element is this circular footwork. Each skater is required to do foot, two footwork sequences, one from each of two of the three categories, which are circular, straight line, or serpentine. Now this a Lutz jump. Triple Lutz jump. And one of the requirements, a combination spin, a camel change camel. Now notice how up far up he is on the toe of his blade. He's not lying, he's not circling on the flat of the blade. And that's keeping it from spinning as fast and as well as it could. The position, not good enough. Only 16 years of age. On the ladies' side, Dick, we see young women 13, 14 years of age competing at this level all the time, but 16 is very young for a man to be at this level. Had a great year in the junior circuit this past season. Meddling in two of the major events, qualifying for the Junior Grand Prix Final, did Ryan. Now, I'll tell you something. I criticized him a lot, but he's a wonderful skater. Right. He's very good. He's got a lot of potential, and he is amazingly advanced, uh, you know, for his first year in senior competition. And he's got some excitement about his skating, and he's got a great personality on the ice. And that's a sin must, sincere must, smile on his face right now, I too. Must he's say, excited. I, I liked him tremendously. Look at this combination. First, the triple flip. Good, straight, elegant kind of look and he pulled that one off very neatly and very cleanly. He controlled those moves. Now look right here as he steps into this triple lutz. Good back outside there edge. He's had some trouble with flutzing it. That was a good performance overall. And finds the median more point eight. Well, he's a heck of an all-around athlete, too. He's got some company there. I'm not sure where that came from, but uh, an all-star baseball you know, basketball player back in Missouri. Two sets of marks now, Dick. Required element marks reflecting those eight required elements. 4.7 up to 5. .8. Those are pretty low marks. They were nice technical moves. They're, they're like a sophisticated junior move. But they're very good. I'm going to let Madonna in the house here. Uh, presentation mark, 4.7 up to 5.1. Look, 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 look at him move his arm. <laughs> Ryan Bradley gets things started here with the men's short program. Well, up next, he's trying to medal once again. Trifon Zivanovic takes the ice when we come back to the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Coverage of the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships continues now. The men's short program already underway. Terry Gannon back with you. Michael Weiss, Timothy Gable, the two names everybody has mentioned and expects to battle it out for the gold medal here. You would expect Michael Weiss to come in as the favorite. After all, he's coming off his best year yet as a skater, and he is the defending national champion. But it's not the case. Much of the attention has focused on Timothy Gable. Earlier this season, of course, he became the first man ever to land three quadruple jumps in one program. And, of course, the sport now in terms of men, it's all about quads. We welcome in once again Mr. Dick Button. What about this matchup now? How do you size it up? Well, uh, look, I mean, you said it perfectly. The war of skating right now is the war of quadruples. And it's gotten so intense and competitive that the quest to do the first of any variation of a quadruple, no matter how far out, has almost become comical. I mean, the question is, who will be the first to do the quad in the national championships? Both Michael Weiss and Timothy Gable are striving for this title. Gable skates first. Gable is known for landing quads left and right in competition. Weiss may hold the record for failing to complete quads the most number of times <laughs> in a national competition. Tim has done as many as three quads in only one program, yet he failed to complete a quad at last year's nationals. Now, this is only the second year quads have been allowed in the short program. The rivalry's intense, the suspense is intense. Good grief, hold on and watch. The quads come up early in the short programs and everything else is secondary. Good grief, the challenges continue all week long for the two top contenders. For more on that, let's go down and join Leslie Visser. Leslie?
Terry, it's been a dramatic week for both men. Tim Gable took his last classes at Case Western Reserve on Monday. He took history and Italian. He said he couldn't really concentrate in either one. Then he moved to a hotel. He said he's trying to make this week as normal as possible. Well, as for Michael Weiss, he's battled injuries and the rumor that he might not even skate this week. He says he's fine, even though he was injured on his first day here in practice on Wednesday. I warmed up uh, about 20 minutes into the session. And um, I did triple axle, and I was forward on the landing, and I, like, put my hand down, and my hand slipped out, and I landed right on my chin. So it wasn't too bad, actually. It was actually pretty pretty good for me because, um, you know, I started bleeding. I just got a Band-Aid and put it on, and, uh, you know, I got back into the, you know, my mindset, and I did a few quads and had a good practice after that. And then we just went and put, it through, put a few stitches in it, and uh, it's fine. So Michael Weiss trying to get things back together Competing here in Cleveland in time. Hasn't been his kind of Culver season, City, but he'll come California. up a little bit later. Let's have a warm welcome right now, for Trifon Zivanovic. Trifon Zivanovic takes the ice. He was the surprise of last year's national championships. Ended up with the silver medal when no one expected him to do that. Competes here with the same program that he used last year which is not a good, um, I think, impression for the judges. They like to see something new, something that's developed. More. The music from the soundtrack, The Mummy. First element is a triple flip, triple toe combination. Here it is. Double toe. We just talked about all the quads being such a key. Triffin does not have a quad planned here in his short program. He has yet to land one in competition. This is his triple axle. That was beautifully landed. The edge clean and very precise coming out. What hurts his skating is the round shoulder uh, style that he has. He just doesn't stretch up and stand up straight, and that, I think, hurts him tremendously. or sit spin requirement that he's chosen to do a sit spin. There must be not less than six revolutions on each foot. There's a wild, uncontrolled quality about his skating. Very energetic, but the fact that it's uncontrolled, I think, hurts him. Centering there, you see the circles on the ice falling right with inside the preceding one. Footwork into a triple left jump. Combination spin, a camel into a sit spin, back sit spin, and a back cross foot spin. He has wonderful energy. It's just that he, he, he the whole picture, he loses on the whole picture because of the round shoulder back and the unstretched legs. I think if he, if he could just put a little better framework on this whole thing that it uh, would be received much more uh, with much more enthusiasm. You saw his coach a moment ago, Gary Visconti, last year when he won that silver medal, he was banging those skate guards on the boards. You could hear him all through the arena. Now, look at this triple axle right there. A skidded edge, but a fine landing with a clean edge. No back inside edge, switching to an outside edge on that landing. That was a good, clean quality. 
24-year-old from Los Angeles now awaits his marks. Got a mixed result since that silver medal last year. 16th at the World Championships, a fifth and a sixth place finish. Grand Prix this year. Required elements, they're the marks. Well, they're pretty good marks. I'll tell you, 5-5 five, five at this point of the program is a very acceptable mark. And now for presentation, 5.2 up to 5.5 for Trifon Zivanovic. When we come back, he's the favorite, and he's in his hometown. Timothy Gable takes the ice when we return to Cleveland. And representing the Winterhurst Figure Skating Club in Lakewood, Ohio, Timothy Gable. Well, the fans here in Cleveland have worked for seven years to bring the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships to their hometown, and now they're about to watch one of their own, the favorite coming in, Timothy Gable, last year's bronze medalist and he's going to skate to duke ellington's caravan and he's got two magnificent elements planned First he's getting out of the way a spin combination a sit spin change sit spin Next is footwork into a quadruple salsa. The quad, of course, has never been completed at the national championships. Let's see. Now he's been doing them left and right during the practice sessions. And there it is. And he stepped out of it. Now, whether or not they'll, I don't think they'll count that because he did not hold the landing edge. And he can do these, you know, with his left hand tied behind his back. And to miss it you know, is, is or to uh, jump out of it is just not. It's different not when you, the lights go on, isn't you it? You better believe it. Look at this combination first, a triple axel. Oh, wow, he was off on that. And a triple left. Now, that shows you how well he turns in the air. I mean, the guy was way out of balance on the landing of the triple axel, but he was a nevertheless able to pull off the triple uh, toe loop. Wonderful turning ability in the air. Timothy, originally from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, but now lives and trains in Lakewood, Ohio, just outside of where we are here in Cleveland. Straight line footwork. The double axle, two and a half revolution. You'll find many a time a skater will fall on that simpler jump after doing a much more complicated one. Now running turns into a combination spin right there. Now this requires one change of foot only and at least two changes of position and a total of not less than 12 revolutions all together. Back cross foot spin. It's been a hectic month schedule wise for Timothy Gable going all over the world competing. It's been a hectic week here in his hometown. All the media attention, all the fans everywhere he goes to practice just can't get away from them. The one place he can do that, where he is right now, on the ice. Now, look at this quadruple Salkow right there. Wonderful revolution, but right there he lands it, and he doesn't check it out. He turns over, steps on to the next one. Now, watch again. It's the shoulders that count. The way he goes up into the air, first of all, good tight revolution but watch as he lands now watch that left the right shoulder turns and comes right around it doesn't check back to control the edge there'll be a deduction for that now this triple axle watch first here as he gets up into the air great revolution but again not able to control that too well and he yet steps into it and pulls off the triple toe loop that shows enormous ability at spinning in the air 
Well, Dick, what we've seen all year is if you do attempt the quad, even if you miss it, the starting point from which to judge for those judges is much higher than if you don't attempt well, the quad. Well, the deductions are much lower, but that did not count as a quadruple no. jump. He did not hold the landing, and if you don't hold the landing, it's the same thing as a double turn coming out of the landing. You saw the required element mark, 5.2 to 5.6, and now for presentation, 5.6 up to 5.8 as Timothy sits alongside Carol Heiss Jenkins and Glenn Watts. So he does not become the first to ever land a quad at the Nationals, but right now, Timothy Gable in the lead over Trippin Zivanovich. The men's short program continues. Gable, Zivanovich, and Bradley, your top three right now, as one of the veterans comes onto the ice. 26-year-old Damon Allen from Rockford, Illinois, in his seventh appearance at the Senior National Championships. He won the Midwestern sectionals to earn his trip to Cleveland. The music, it had to be you and putting on the Ritz. Alan's a very musical skater. He also is age 26 has had a great amount of experience in this kind of competition. His first move, a triple axel. Weak landing. He too did not check the landing and turned that edge around. There'll be a deduction for that, but it'll be counted as a element, as an element. Good steady position here. Now his two jump combination is of less difficulty than some of the others have been attempting. It's a triple Lutz, and he stepped out of that and then blew it going into the next one. So uh, from a competitive point of view, I'm sorry to say Damon Allen just ain't in the running anymore. Eight required elements, remember those, so tough to come back when you haven't completed a few of those. He's had a career that's really been characterized by injury ever since he won the junior national title in 91 including a broken leg back in 96 that doctors said at the time would keep him off the ice maybe forever. Remember the deductions, he didn't fail to do them, he didn't omit them, but he failed to do them. And there's a distinction there, and the penalties for those are 0.1 to 0.4. Work into a triple flip instead of a triple lutz is of less difficulty. On the other hand, this combination spin has pretty good position. Man who knows what the national championships are all about. Seven times he has competed at this event. You know, the interesting thing in, in those in those years, he's gone from 10th to 7th to 9th to the 4th to the 5th and to the 6th. And that's not encouraging when you don't improve and move up the ladder, so to speak. But look here as he steps into this triple axle right there. Good, tight edge. But when he lands... There's just no control of that right arm. It is not held back, and he doesn't check the landing. And that caused the double turnout and the deduction. Four required elements. Four point Finally healthy five after a number of years four with injuries. Four Damon four Allen four now is marks. Four required seven. elements. Four we see those. Four point eight. We'll mark a 4.4. Four four. There's just too many deductions. 
required with the elements. That's what the purpose of this particular program is, is to cover elements. Presentation marks, though, much better. 4.9 up to 5.5. So Damon Allen into third place ahead of Ryan Bradley, who skated earlier. When we come back, 21-year-old Derek Delmore, the 1998 Junior World Champion. He'll skate when we come back to Cleveland. Alexandria, Virginia, would you please welcome Derek Delmore. Timothy Gable, Triffin Zivanovich, and Damon Allen, your top three here in the men's short program. Remember, Michael Weiss still to skate, but here is 21-year-old Derek Delmore, the 1998 Junior World Champion. The music here is Leyenda, an SMA. Good position, forward camel. Good steady position. Requirement is there that there be not less than six revolutions on each foot. Good flexibility. Back in 98, that was just a great year for Delmore. The Junior World Championship finished fifth at the Senior National Championship and then fell to tenth last season. He was really worried that some people had written him off already. Back to dispel any rumors that he is no longer on the scene. Now this is his triple axle. Mm. And you could see the takeoff. The takeoff, he was so squared going into the jump that it was difficult for him to check out of it at the end. The most, every problem in a jump comes from the takeoff. And unless it's perfectly set up, you run into difficulties. This short program sets the stage for the free skate. We'll have live coverage of that, along with coverage of the ice dance competition. Saturday afternoon over on ABC Sports, starting at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Ah, that Lutz combination, that Lutz out of footwork was just uh, not, not even a good attempt. Sit spin, there'll be a change of foot here, back position, and a back cross foot. He's a very accomplished skater, a very, you know, smooth, moving skater. There's his mother, Yvonne, who met his father, John, a retired Air Force colonel, and they both worked at the Pentagon. Matter of fact, Derek Delmore, full-time student at Stanford, will graduate with a double major, communications and psychology, this June. Now, look at how he steps up into this, right? You see the scatter, the, the, the chatter yeah. of that edge? You must have a clean edge going up, or at least a clean skid, a slight skid. And that caused the problem. He wasn't able to check it out going. That interesting edge, that, that first edge, is really, truly interesting. 3.9, 4.1. And now the marks for Derek Delmore. They will not be as high as he had hoped, of course, with the mistakes. Required element marks and uh, the low, a 3.9. Uh, that's... That's... And there are three of them. That's difficult. Now... And now presentation marks take 4.6 up to 5.2. So Derek Delmore didn't get off to the start that he had wanted here in Cleveland. Up next, the defending champion, Michael Weiss, begins his attempt to repeat when we come back to the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. 
defending U.S. champion Michael Weiss about to skate here in Cleveland. Let's get a report now from Leslie Visser. Terry, there are four generations of Weisses here. 90-year-old Grandpa Lewis drove from Maryland to see Michael skate. He's joined by fourth-generation Christopher Michael, who's three months old. Michael said despite his injuries, he's been training like he's 100%, and like Tim Gable, he's planning to do his quad. Terry? All right, Leslie, that means there's only 90 years difference between Lewis and Another Christopher Michael for four generations. Right now, Timothy Gable in the lead over Trippin Zivanovich and, and Damon Michael Allen. Weiss. But here is Michael Weiss, the 23-year-old from Fairfax, Virginia, the 1999 world bronze medalist, but he's had all kinds of problems this season, most of them due to the stress fracture in his left ankle. He's also had a lot on his plate with a second child. He's even got a caravan of 60 friends and relatives here. That's got to take a toll on you. I don't care how much they stay to themselves. The pressure, the enormous amount of, it doesn't allow him to settle down and get his head together. The music on the waterfront, Leonard Bernstein. Footwork going into that quad toe, quadruple toe loop. Here it is, the footwork. Will he be the first? No, a triple. And it didn't even look like he tried the quadruple. It was just very easy. And by the way, that sounds like a put down of a triple. It isn't. <laughs> it's a very difficult jump. How spoiled we are, huh? Yes. The next move, a triple axle, triple toe loop. Combination planned, here it is. Oh, look at the skid off that he took up. The edge, the way the edge took, he just skidded right off it, and that hurt it. And remember, Timothy Gable, who skated earlier and is in the lead, he was nowhere near perfect. There is room at the top. The circular footwork. Very nice axle sit spin. Final element, a combination spin. Turning moves into this. First a camel position, then a sit spin position. Now watch him change foot. There has to be at least two changes of position and not less than six revolutions on each foot. Good back spin. Good program. Good program for Michael White. I think he's got to be happy uh, for that. Even though he didn't attempt the quadruple, he did a very competent triple jump. His dad with the sunglasses he's on right, right there. Yeah, you hear Greg yelling? Yeah, he's got to feel a sigh of relief right now. There's his wife, Lisa, right along the side there. All the problems Michael's had with the injuries this year, the fourth and fifth place finish in the Grand Prix events, maybe not as high as expectations were, a chance here to redeem himself and forget all of that in Cleveland. All right, now, look at this triple axle, triple toe combination. First, watch the edge right there. Did you see how the snow, the snow went up into the air? That caused, him, that caused him to lean back, get out of angle, but look at the save that he did as he went into that. You gotta, you gotta hand it to him, and that looked like a double toe at the end, not a triple toe. For Michael Weiss, for required A elements. short program that was choreographed by Brian Wright, Andre Wiziger, his longtime coach. Plenty of consistency throughout the years for Michael Weiss. Six. Required element five marks, that's a wide five. range, 5.0 to 5.7. Look, a 5.0, that's a tough six. mark. Uh, 
And now his marks for presentation. And now for presentation. 5.7. 5.5 up to 5.9. So the presentation marks the key, and Michael Weiss into the lead. Well, I'll tell you something. Having a 5.9 out of a perfect score of 6 is a very generous mark. One of the judges put him in third place right now. Five judges overall placing Michael Weiss into first. But it puts him overall in first place. So. What can I tell you? Due to skate next, veteran Shepard Clark, who had a nasty fall during the warm-up, injured his back. We'll see how effective he can be when we return to Cleveland. Back in Cleveland, a reminder, Sports Center to follow. Kenny Main, Trey Wingo, bringing you all the day's news and highlights in the world of sports. Right now, it's Michael Weiss, Timothy Gable, and Trifon Zivanovich, your top three. As Shepard Clark takes the ice, his 11th appearance at the Senior National Championships, 28 years old, and a moment ago in tears because of the pain he is in. He had a hard fall during warm-ups. Some question as to whether he would skate at all, but he's out there trying to give it a go. The music, the 1812 Overture by Tchaikovsky. The tall skater, 5'11". He has extraordinary presence on the ice. He's opening with this triple axle. What's the takeoff edge? Oh, way off on the side, way off on the side. He fell on that during the practice session. Did you notice again how the takeoff edge went to the left? It did not go straight up. Still grimacing too. You know he's in pain right now. This triple Lutz, triple loop combination. Triple Lutz, no triple loop. Very dramatic skater. No, no, no. Now you could see every movement was taking so much out of him and he just, he can't go on. A minute, 13 seconds into this short program, which is two minutes and 40 seconds long, and he's gonna have a word with the judges and say, I tried to give it a go, but that's it. So Shepard Clark, who has been to 10 other senior national championships here at number 11, not able to get through the pain. Now, well, many folks on their feet at least applauding the effort to go through it. Well, he's going to use up all two minutes and 40 seconds, that's for sure. Laura Edmonds, one of his coaches, Lopka Button. And off goes Shepard Clark. Not able to continue. Oh. Up next, a man trying to crash the medal party here in Cleveland. 19-year-old Matt Savoy takes the ice when we come back. Cleveland, a reminder, right after we're done here, Kenny Main and Trey Wingo bring you all the day's news and highlights in the world of sports on SportsCenter. That's right after the men's short program here in Cleveland. Right now, Michael Weiss, Timothy Gable, and Trifon Zivanovich, your top three as we are down to the final and skater the Illinois Valley Figure of the Club evening. in Peoria, Illinois. A warm welcome, please, for Matthew Savoy. 19-year-old Matt Savoy from Peoria, Illinois. Fourth 
at the Junior World Championships in 99. Last year finished just off the podium in fourth at the National Championships. Painted black. His opening move. Watch the way he goes into his triple axle. It will come right out of a spread eagle. And that is one tough position to take a three and a half revolution jump. Right here, now watch as he gets right into this spread eagle and steps up into a triple axle. That was wonderful. This combination. Beautifully steady. That's as steady as they come. Camel change camel. By the way, Shepard Clark did make his way back under his own power in the men's dressing room moments ago. Dick, you know, neither Michael Weiss nor Timothy Gable were clean in their short programs. Matt Savoy, a skater, to not only medal here, but could get up to the top spot. I think he could, I think he caused some trouble among the, uh, among the top skaters, that's for sure. Many times, championships are won, or events are won, by the skaters, not who do the best, but who make the least mistakes. Triple Lutz. nice steady performance overall performance he should be very proud of that mm. you know to take you, you in this sport you really have to take it easy you have to take it step by step element by element great mistakes destroy you Michael Weiss wondering whether he'll end up on top of the standings after this short program going into the free skate but Matt Savoy the A student a sophomore at Bradley University in Peoria has enjoyed a great year so far still going now, look at this combination right here. Very nice, steady, and good position right there. Good revolution and clean, outgoing edges. Nice. Five point five. Five point five. So now the marks for Matt Savoy. The three medalists from last year's championships up there now. He finished in fourth last year. Let's see what happens here. 5.3 to 5.7. Well, I think those are very nice marks. They reflect a steady, good quality all the way through the program. That was, that was important. And now the march for presentation. 5.3 up to 5.7. So Matt Savoy able to jump all the way up to third. In fact, three of the judges put him in first place, but he is in third overall at this point after the short program. Michael Weiss, though, is still the leader heading into the free skate. We'll have a word with the reigning U.S. champ when we come back in a moment. Spot on down the list, some of the names competing here this week. Right now, Michael has made his way over to have a word with Leslie Visser. She's also with Timothy Gable, the top two men in this event. Leslie? Terry, they are the two favorites, and they are halfway home. Tim, first to you, the emerging Gable fable. Uh, what happened on the quad? 
Well, I think I just got a little cautious uh, going into it and maybe didn't skate as fast as normal. And uh, I was just happy to recover from that and do the triple axle, triple toe as well as I did and skate a good program. Yeah, you skated great. What is this like for you? Is it a source of comfort or is it distracting to skate so close to home? No, it's really been a source of comfort. Uh, the crowd was awesome. They really helped me along today. And I'm glad that so many of my friends and training buddies could be here to see me. Yeah, it's fantastic for you. Well, the defending champion, Michael, but do you feel right now a little unproven? Yeah, I think so, just because, you know, I haven't done a, a few events recently. But, uh, you know, it was, it was really the best thing for me to be able to go home and be able to train and, and get ready for this and, and make sure that I took the time off necessary in order to be in top shape for this event. And, uh, you know, I feel, really feel great coming into this competition. Great. Thanks, Michael. Good luck to you both. Back to you, Terry. All right, Leslie, thank you. So the men have their turn tonight. Friday night beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern. The ladies take the ice, including Michelle Kwan, for their short program. We'll have all the action here on ESPN. Then they skate for gold Saturday. Our coverage over on ABC Sports begins at 4 o'clock Eastern time with ice dance, live coverage of the men's championship. Then in prime time Saturday night beginning at 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll have pairs and live coverage of the ladies' championship. Remember, Sports Center is up next. Kenny Main, Trey Wingo, get you up to date. Talk about Ken Griffey Jr. becoming a Cincinnati Red today. Look at the Syracuse Louisville Hoops matchup and the Red Wings taking on the St. Louis Blues. For Dick Button and Leslie Visser, I'm Terry Gannon. So long for now from Cleveland. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Good night, everybody.